Hi, this is Mike, WB4HUC, and today's video is going to be about why I prefer to use an external wattmeter to using a wattmeter that's built into the radio or the tuner or the amplifier. And there's a few reasons for that. One is you only have one place to go. So in other words, instead of looking at uh, three pieces of equipment that might give you different readings, just look at the one piece of equipment that will give you one reading that you can look at. And if your uh, SWR watt meter is reasonably accurate, then you're good. So, the and the other reason is most radios today let you adjust the output power. So, when you tell your radio to produce 5 watts or 10 watts, does it really do that? Uh, I have two radios here, the Tentec Omni 7 and the ICOM IC7300, and neither radio, uh, the, the power output doesn't match the setting on either radio. It's, it's usually a little bit different. And I can show that to you here. So if I wind this down to 5, which could be 5%, so 5% of 100 would be 5 watts. Uh, or it could be five watts. I don't remember. I'd have to read the book. Um, and there's no difference between setting this slider here and controlling the radio or actually using the radio, the knob on the radio to adjust the output power. It's the same thing. So what do we get? Um, again, we're on a dummy load. That's why you don't see any signals here. So I'll just, we're in CW mode. We're showing... Two and a half watts instead of five. Okay, so right off the bat, we know that five doesn't mean five watts. So let's go to 10. And now we're getting five and a half watts instead of 10. So I'm going to switch. Instead of using the mouse to control this slider, if you notice this TX uh, legend here, that just says that the remote tuning encoder, um, which has a knob on it, is now set to control the output power of the radio. So you can't see me turn the knob, but you can see the slider as it changes, and you can see the power output change. So let's run the power up to 20 watts. Well, let's change this to 20 and see what power we get. So we're getting just under 10 watts, about 10 watts for a setting of 20. So what does it take to get 20 watts? So I'm just going to turn the knob till we get 20 watts up here in the watt meter. So we got 20.39 watts. And the setting shows 41. So there you go. So this does not indicate the actual amount of output power from the radio. Hopefully, there are other radios out there that are more accurate than this, but I don't know. Um, in any case, I always use this watt meter uh, to check the output power. And the same thing for the drive level to the amplifier. So I'm going to go back to the antenna because my dummy load will not take uh, hundreds of watts from the amplifier and I'm going to go back to the tuner so when I was on the dummy load I bypassed the tuner uh, because the dummy load is 50 ohms and so let's see what we got here we had uh, I believe 20 watts out before well we actually have a little bit more here 22 watts so if I turn this down I could turn it down a little bit and get my 20 watts. So there you go, 20.6 watts. And because of the tuner, then the SWR reading is uh, an SR 1.26 to 1. So now let's turn on the amplifier and see how much output power 20 watts of drive gives the amplifier. And again, it's an Elecraft KPA 500. 
So we get 400 watts for a drive power of 20 watts. So I'm going to use the knob again to turn that up till we get to 500. So there's 500 watts, give or take. So how much output power from the radio? So it took 26 watts to get 500 watts out of the amplifier. Not too bad. So there you go. That's why I prefer to use a single source for checking my power in SWR, and I prefer it to be an external watt meter. And if you do like I do, so I can switch uh, radios into and out of the uh, amplifier tuner antenna system. So if the 7300 was operating, I could switch over to it quickly and show you that, but it'll be about the same. Uh, and I wanted to keep this video a little bit short. So, so there you go. If you use the, the single watt meter across multiple radios, then you get consistent results because the watt meter is always going to be what it is, right? You're not going to have to worry about this watt meter being 5 or 10% more or less accurate than the other watt meter. You use the same watt meter across multiple radios and you should get, uh, you know, 50 watts should be 50 watts if the watt meter is accurate. 50 watts should be 50 watts regardless of which radio is producing it. So there you go. So again, like I say, just a real short video uh, about why I prefer an external watt meter, SWR meter, to one that's internal. And I also prefer an external antenna tuner to the one built into the radio, but that's a story for another time. So as always, I uh, hope you found this uh, interesting, if not particularly useful, but either way, thank you for watching.